and, and uh, the power, the speaking in tongues, and you know we used to talk about that stuff all the time back in the day. But I think you know I think we've gotten too. I mean I talk about it, but I think we've gotten too uh, too modern because folks look at you weird when you start talking about that kind of stuff now. And uh, but that's what the power is. Culture shifts, but God's word doesn't change. Um, God's word doesn't change and and um, you know I, I'm not being critical I, I think I do observe though and sometimes you have to watch what you listen to because some of it's just a good pep pep talk motivational talk and uh, we don't need in this hour we need power okay you heard y'all hear my rap ministry in this hour we need the power of God um a lot of us are logging a lot of time at church and nothing's different. Okay, let me look over here. You know, a lot of us have logged a lot of time. We have information, but no manifestation. And that's just, I don't know, I don't know about you, I'm not wired like that. I need to see results. If I'm going to go to the gym, you know, for two months, I need to see, I need to see a pimple or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just like that. I'm just like that. I need to see something. Well, God never intended for us to get this much word and not have manifestation. So I want to talk to you today about healing being the children's bread. But I want to go to that, that Acts chapter 3. And can you stay focused for, for just, just a few minutes? Uh, well, my few minutes is more than a few. But this is so, this is so important. I... It's so important, and it's so liberating. Now, um, I was going to say this for the end of the service, but since they sang that song, I did it this morning, too. Acts chapter 3, this is a demonstration of that name. Verse 1, now Peter and John went up to, together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate, of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms from those who entered the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go in the temple they asked for alms and fixing his eyes on them on him with John Peter said look at us now some people are like oh there they go they so conceited I'm talking about look at us but they, they did it for a reason so he gave them attention expecting to receive something from them and Peter said silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. What do you have, Peter? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he's leaping up, stood walking in the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Now, I want you to notice something. Peter didn't pray for this guy. Well, yes, he did. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. I'm, I'm doing this. <laughs> Peter didn't pray for this guy. Peter said, okay, you want some coin of a realm. I'm going to give you what I have. This is one of the reasons why you need to get instructed, we need to study, we need to read. Why? Because I need to know what I have, not what I'm trying to get. Peter knew what he had. What was that, Peter? He said, I got the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. I don't have the money and all of that. I, I, that there's nothing wrong with that. He just left his purse. Well, he didn't have a purse. <laughs> He left his bag, his man bag, man purse, whatever you call it. But he said, what I do have, I'm going to give you something I have. How many of you, how many of you know what you have? I mean, don't just give me a, a, a pat answer. I want you to think about what, when's the last time you consciously said, I'm going to use the name of Jesus on this. I don't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know all that theology. I don't know all the etymological definitions. and the, uh, I don't know all of that. But I do have the name of Jesus. And I'm going to take the name. That, uh, and uh, Give me verse 16, I think, now. Just skip down to verse 16. 
He said, because this is what we're saying. He said, his name, through faith in his name, made this man strong. What made the man strong? The name and faith in the name. So I can have the name, but if I don't have faith or confidence in it, when I use it, it won't do anything. And I, we were talking about just how back in the old days, we actually had to kind of teach him. And, and we, we were conscious of this kind of thing. I had a, I had a boxer, a boxer, a dog. And, uh, and he passed out. I think he died. I don't know if he died or not. I don't know. I didn't stand around to wait. But I remember going laying hands on the dog. He was in the backyard. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I didn't lay hands on him. I just spoke to it. Get up. And I had no money to go to the vet. I guess I was like this guy. Now y'all be taking to the vet $700 for good Lord. I did buy the dog. That was my first dog I ever purchased with money. Because we didn't buy dogs. When I came from, where I came from, you just find one take it home. You, just, you find a dog, you know, you give him a little something, he follow you home. That was your dog. We didn't go buy dogs. Some of y'all... Some of them neighborhoods, y'all brought the dog home too. You know, and them, those dogs be loyal too, don't they? They be loyal. They'll sit right there in the front yard. My dog used to walk me to school, and then when it was, he, somehow he had a, uh, some kind of device in him. He knew when it was time for me to get off. He'd be at the corner waiting on me. Hey, Ken, are you good? <laughs> but this dog I purchased. So I said, you ain't dying on me. <laughs> them other dogs, you like, okay, you get hit by a car, they run around. You know, okay, we'll get another one. That's not cool. But we, we, we have thinking like that. But I remember I said, in the name of Jesus. And that dog came back. The dog. It wasn't. But see, we, were, we used to teach this all the time. We used to study this all the time. Because we, we didn't have money. We didn't have nothing. See, now we got too much stuff we can fall back on. You know, so we get a call. We can run to urgent care. You know, we don't have, we don't have, you know, we just like, what? I can go to the counter. And we didn't even, anyway. But he said, it's, it's the name and faith in the name. Put it back up there, please, verse 16. This is where, we, this is where we're going, man. No, we're we here. It's his name through faith in his name that made this man what? Strong. Watch this. When you see a note, yes, the faith which come through him, Jesus, has given this man perfect, this is where we're going, perfect soundness in the presence of you all. It is God's will, saints of God, to have perfect soundness. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Perfect soundness. That's God's will for you, it's God's will for me. I don't care if you're 85 or 15. Perfect sound is, is the plan and purpose of God through what Jesus did. Now, go back to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. And let me show you the healing. Is, it belongs to us. And I know, um, you know, I, this, this, just these last three weeks, man, we've had, or at least people I know, been going through some stuff and uh, physically and emotionally and and uh, thank God for his provision though thank God for his provision and I want to encourage you guys to go to Deb class you say well pastor I'm, I'm already I'm good I'm like well this is what you need to stock up on it while you're good it's hard to get this thing get this learning this while you're going through yeah pain will cause you to just like forget it yeah all right now, y'all remember uh, Matthew 15, that's where I asked you to go. A few weeks ago, we talked about salvation, and we said that uh, how can we escape the things that come on us if we neglect the so great salvation? And we said salvation doesn't mean just born again. It means saved, delivered, protected, healed, preserved, made well, and made whole. So whatever is missing in my life, whatever is not working, Salvation covers it. Now, let's begin with verse 22. Thank you, Lord. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on me. 
uh, son of David, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and urged him, said, send this woman away from here. She cries after us. And he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus didn't pay attention to her. To them, he addressed her. And then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Now, before she came demanding, now she came worshiping. A lot of times, we just want to come up in God's face, like, God, this is what I need. And we don't come worshiping. And I mentioned this the other day about how, you know, we, we, want us, we want what he can supply, but not the supplier. Worship turns him on. I said worship turns him on. Worship turns him on, and, and you don't have to wait till you get in the crowd. You can worship God in, in the comfort of your car. You just, just worship him. The reason why people, have, people worry so much, they don't have enough worship. They have worry instead of worship. The Bible says he inhabits the I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I like music, and, but I'm, 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 uh, my preference is worship. You know, I put songs on my thing. I just play them 27 times, same song. I just I love to just worship God and, and thank Him for it and sing to Him. The Bible says, "Make melody in your heart to the Lord." I like I don't like singing to y'all. I like singing to Him. And sometimes I just make up stuff. I go reggae sometimes. You know, I go uh, 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 bluegrass, whatever that is. <laughs> I don't know what I'd be singing. I just make up stuff. And Jesus, I love you. There is none like you in all the earth. I thank you, Lord. You were there for me when I didn't know what to do. I go, what's this? <laughs> do my dance. Do my dance. I just, no, really. I mean, I love his the relationship, and it's so refreshing. Whenever I get down, I got, I got, I got problems like everybody else. I, don't, I keep my here, though. I think I said I posed the other day. It's not what happens to you, it's what happens in you. I got problems, I just keep them out here. I don't, I don't let them get inside of me. I don't let them get inside of me. I just, uh-uh, I got a buffer. No, mm -mm. don't do, I don't do problems. I got, I got a God who's alive. And that's why I start praising, I act like I got a God. Honestly, the devil think, make me look like I don't have a God? Oh my God, what am I gonna do? I can't believe these people say this about me. I don't do all that. That's acting like I don't have a God. You hear me? That acting like I have a God. I ain't, I ain't studying. Oh. I'm not concerned <laughs> about other people's opinion. I got a God whose opinion of me is, I love you. You're awesome. You're seated together with me in heavenly places. Listen, come on here. Come on up here. That's the God I serve. Anyway, just thought I'd bring it up. So verse 25, so she came and worshipped him. <laughs> saying, Lord, what? Now that's a deep prayer, ain't it? Nah, that ain't deep. She came worship and said, Lord, help me. Sometimes we try to put it all, string it all together. You just need to cry, Lord, help. I need some help. <laughs> but he answered and said, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. So she just got dogged out. Verse 27. And she said, yes, Lord, but even the little dogs eat crumbs which fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered and said to her, oh, woman, girl, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed on that very hour. Now, this woman, Jesus was telling her, look, you're a Gentile. You don't have any right to this healing right now. It's coming down the road, but you don't have a right to it. But I said, you tell me one place where somebody came to Jesus where they were, had a right or not for healing and he turned them away. You can't find it. And, but she received based on the mercy of Jesus. Based, I know this is, this, this is, this is simple, but we receive wholeness, healing, deliverance, all that Jesus purchased based on Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I don't deserve it. Jesus purchased it. And this is how we get our healing. Go to 1 Peter 2.24, please. We receive our healing based on the same thing. Now, 
I know this is common for a lot of you, but watch this. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who himself bore our sins in his own what? He bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you what? Were healed. Okay. Now I want to read this out of the uh, new, no, the Amplified Version. He personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree. Talking about the cross. As on the altar and offered himself on it. That we might die, cease to exist, to sin. And live to righteousness. He died <laughs> on the cross that we may be dead to sin. Die to sin. Now I know, has anybody ever worked in a mortician, uh, a mortuary? No, okay. Well, you saw, you've seen dead people. Maybe people that no longer living in the casket. If you go, oh, oh, Kah! they don't like, golly, I can't believe you sneezing on me. They don't do anything, do they? Why? They're not there. They're dead to it. They're dead to You can talk about them all you want. You know, when he was alive, you know, that boy still, he still owed me $15. You know, I don't know what my $15 is. <laughs> it doesn't faze him. Talk about him. The Bible says to be dead to sin. Jesus died so I can be dead to sin. Sin is out there. But I'm dead to it. What used to pull me in a direction, it's not even temptation because when you're dead to something, it's not even a temptation, is it? I'm dead to it. See, he died for forgive me of sin, but he empowered, his death empowered me to be dead to sin. It's not even temptation. It doesn't even affect me. This is what this is, see, this is this is. This is where we got to go into the thing, man. He, people struggle because they're trying to, I'm trying to not do this. No, no. You get enough of God in you, you'll be dead to it. I told you about Adam. Adam and Eve, God never wanted them to eat the tree of good and evil. He wanted them to eat the tree of life. He wanted them to be so full of that tree of life that... They, they're not even tempted to go into something else. That's the way God is. It's the goodness of God that draws me to repentance. God wants us so full of his goodness that nothing else is even appealing. You following me? Yeah. So I know that Jesus did. That's why he said in Romans 6, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Well, Pastor, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with this here. You, you need to take this scripture or others and meditate on And then when, when that thing rise up, whatever it is, you say, I'm dead to you. I'm dead to you. <laughs> they'll, they'll tell some people sometimes, I'm dead to you. I don't know. If was, she got to really be mad that you do that. But, but no, no, I'm, I'm dead to you. I'm dead. I haven't had a drink of alcohol in 30, 30 some years. I'm dead to it. I don't even think about it. I thought about it one time. I thought, I was down in Houston. And it's hot down there. And they had billboards. And I was riding down 45. And they had this beer up there. And that beer was sweating <laughs> on that billboard. I'm like, oh, Lord. It sure will be nice. Because it was hot, too. I had the one temptation. That's the only temptation I ever had. Really, I mean, I didn't pull over, but I, I was like, I bet that be, I bet that tastes good right about now. <laughs> it's about a hundred degrees, you know. You, and I think, you know how they, they may be high definition, just that can with just sweating. But, but my point is, I can go around it, and I'm dead to it. It don't even bother me. So, you know, you know, and I'm not. Well, I just go through it, and I'll be back. But now I see people that's like under the influence and I'd be like man are you 
used to be like that. Hey! I used to do that. It's foreign to me, but I, I've experienced it, but, but I'm dead to it. You can get so dead to something, you can't even believe you used to do it, but you know you did. And I can go down the road with a couple other things, but I'm going to stop right there with the, with, the, with, the, with the cold one. So, he said, Jesus, the body, right? Jesus' body on a tree that we might be dead to sin and to live under righteousness. But here's the part I want to talk about today. By who wounds or stripes, you have been healed. Now, notice it says, Jesus took stripe for your healing too. The same body, because we always say, thank God, Jesus bore my sins on the cross. That's not all. That's a big one, but that's not all. That's why I'm taking my time today. The same body that hung on the tree so that my sins can be forgiven, it's the same body that hung on the tree so I can be healed. Same one. It's not even a either or. God didn't tell us to make a choice. He said, take all of it. So, 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 so when I ask the Lord, you know, I do something, I'm like, oh God, please forgive me of that sin. Which I don't have to do that, but I just do it anyway. But I'm not saying I don't mess up. I'm saying I don't have to say, Lord, please forgive me. He already forgave me. The proper thing would be like, Father, I receive forgiveness for that. Thank you. I acknowledge the forgiveness. Well, I acknowledge healing from my body. Sometimes we separate them when it's the same body. Watch this. Sin and sickness is from the same source, too. Isn't it? From the same source, the same devil. What are you telling the pastor? I'm telling you, you can be healed and stay healed. Jesus purchased it. He, God poured it on him. So that we, that's why I said, by his strike we're healed. Let me take you to another place. I'm just, we're just going to slow walk this healing into our system. Like I said, you don't, you don't, you know, we don't hear a lot of this like we used to. And that's why, you know, a lot of times all this stuff, man, we don't have to put up with all this. Isaiah 53, please. You have been healed. Say, I have been healed. Yeah, just like your sins have been forgiven. Your sins have been forgiven, you know, past, present, future. Your healing has been provided, past, present, and future. Okay, watch this. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are what? Healed. Yeah. See, so your peace is in there. Your healing is in there. Now, sometimes people say, well, that's just spiritual healing. Okay, let's go over to Matthew 6, because that was a prophecy Isaiah made, and Matthew tells us how Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. All right, Matthew 8, Matthew 8, 16. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirit with the word and healed all who were sick. Why did he do that? Look at verse 17. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. We just read that. Saying, himself took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. So this makes it clear that Jesus suffered for our healing. This makes it clear that healing is the children's bread. This makes it clear that just like I'm dead to sin, ah, oh, come on, man, let's go do this. Let's, I'm dead to that. Don't even, I'm appalled that you would even ask me to do that. Well, the same with sickness and disease. I hate sickness and disease. I hate it. Just like I hate, I hate to see sin destroy people's lives, I hate to see sickness destroy people's lives. I remember, oh, boy, and you know, my, my brother passed away, um, Actually, it'll be on the 11th of November. It's almost a year now. And I stood, I was right by his side. The first time I ever stayed with somebody and watched him expire. But death has a, mm, actually, 
Remember I called you, I said, baby, I'm throwing up. I thought of throwing up. I, I don't know, I, never, I haven't thrown up probably since I had that last drink. But, because I don't throw up, I just don't throw up. I don't, and I got sick, I, I'll never forget it. I was throwing up, my head was spinning, because they called me to the house, my head was spinning. I couldn't even, I, could, I sat up and on the bed, I couldn't move. And then I thought, I went to the bathroom, throwing up bathroom, and so I got dressed and, and done everything, showered, and I ran out, got into the hospital, and I, I ran to the bathroom on the first floor, throwing up. And I walked in the room, and then I realized what was going on. Death has a, I don't know what you call it, man. I hate it. I remember my mother, my, bless her heart, you know, and, 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 but it was different. It was different. I didn't, I wasn't there when she did it, but I was there when she, I, she told me, baby, I'm ready to get out of here. She said, I'm ready to go. I said, oh, mom, you know, Jesus, my Jesus, she said, listen, <laughs> you're not in that body. This is when I learned, this is when I learned God taught me. He said, listen, you, I was telling the first group this morning, I, I, all week I've been studying selfishness. I thought I was going to preach that today. And then last night he told me, I'm like, golly, why you doing me like that? But anyway, it was good. Y'all better wear y'all big boy pants when I preach that, though. <laughs> we all selfish. You can't be offended unless you self-centered. Yeah. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't even get offended. If it's all, because self me, it's all about me. Why you talk about me like that? Why you look at me like that? Why you say this about me? Marriages break up because of selfishness. Church is split because of selfishness. There's wars in the Middle East because of selfishness. Yeah. Management and labor at all because of selfishness. It's deep. But anyway... And so God told me, he said, yeah, remember I told you, are you selfish about your mother? You want your mother, you don't want your mother to stay here just for you. You don't care about how she feel. You just, you just don't want to lose. You don't want to lose her. What about what she wants? I know, right? And she told me, she said, little baby, this pain, I can't even feel my, I, I don't want to live. I want to go be with Jesus. This pain is too much. All the morphine, all the stuff she was giving, it wasn't enough. After a while, it just ain't enough. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, mama, you know, Jesus. I'm, pre I'm preaching all this stuff right here. She's like, look, I hear all that, but you know what? There's a place waiting for me. Right. And think about it. She's way better off right. than sitting here while her son talking about, in the name of Jesus. Right. <laughs> she don't want to be here. She's done. So I'm 75. I'm done. Yeah. Anyway. But sometimes we're so selfish. We, you know, we just think, we just think about us. No, you just think about you. How did I get off on that? No, I'm for real. For seriously, what, I, what, I, what was I? Dealing with the death. Dizzy. Throwing up. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to just pick it up right where I, I think I was. Okay. Oh, I was talking about I hate sickness and disease. Well, Pastor, how am I supposed to die? Expire. Just expire. Just wear out. Right? Just wear out. Okay, now go to James 4 7. Hmm? Oh, okay, death said go to sleep. Go to sleep. <laughs> What's wear out? Go to sleep. Saying, okay, go to sleep. <laughs> you looked at me like, don't be, don't be questioning me. <laughs> okay, can we agree that that it's clear that Jesus suffered for our healing? Yes. Can we agree that healing belongs to me? As a born-again believer, every born-again believer in here. Now, I'm not putting anybody down if, if you, you're facing something, you're dealing with something. That happens. It's going to happen to all of us. It's going to happen to all of us. 
and it doesn't mean you got a demon because you got a problem. It doesn't mean you 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 got a you 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 know. It doesn't mean any. It, it means life happened. We live in a very toxic environment. Now there's some things you open yourself up to, though. There's some things. Don't I ain't gonna know. I'm not gonna blanket that. There's some things you open yourself up to. But by and large, um, um, it 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 happens. Stuff happens to us. But healing is the children's bread. It's what God has given us. Every Christian healing belongs to you. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to work with this group. Healing belong to you. I didn't ask you what you're dealing with, what you've gone through in the past. I'm telling you, healing belong to you. Jesus bore all of that so that we wouldn't have to. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all of his benefits who forgives all of my iniquity, who heals all of my diseases. Whatever dis-ease is in here now, whatever pain is in here now, whatever malfunction is in here now, Jesus purchased that. I can go ahead and, 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 and claim that promise and claim my healing based on what Jesus did. I don't have to put up with it. I don't have to accept it. And this is what I want to read here. Okay. Let's do it. James 4, 7. Now, uh, this is one of the most elementary principles in the word of God. One of the most elementary principles in the word. Now, James 4, 7 says, submit yourself therefore to who? God. Who do you need to submit to? God. Okay. And then it goes on to say, and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay, now I want you to read the second part, resist the devil, and I want you to put some attitude on resist. Submit yourself, therefore, to God and do what? Resist. Oh, y'all did. I think y'all did it better than the first group did. I had to coach them a little bit. Let's do it again. Submit yourself, therefore, to God and then resist. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to have them add the devil. Thank you. You were ahead of me. Who was that? You? Oh, it had to be Hooks. Okay. It's always Hooks. Hooks is always trying to preach my sermon. Okay, but we're going to do that now. When I, I want to say submit yourself therefore to God, you're going to say resist the devil. And I'm going to, I'm going to put a little, a little bit more attitude on it. Just a little bit more. Because I hate him. But I can't resist him until I submit. So submit yourself therefore to God and resist. Resist who? The devil. Resist who? The devil. I think y'all mean this. Okay. And then what would the devil? What would the devil do? Please. Okay. Now, this teaches us that there are some things from God and some things from the devil. Some things are from God. Some things are from the devil. You got it? Yes. So notice there's no third category. It's either from God or from the devil. It's no, there's not an optional category. Either I'm dealing with stuff from God or I'm dealing with stuff from the devil. Got it? Either I need to submit to God and resist the devil, or I, or I have submitted to the devil. Now, now, <laughs> sickness has nothing to do with God, right? Now, let me give you my synonyms. I looked these up. I wanted to bring these to you about resist, just so you can get an idea. It means to withstand, keep out, oppose. Refuse to accept, object to, <laughs> kick against, block, and frustrate. It's so simple. I submit to God, withstand, oppose, refuse to accept, refuse to accept, refuse to accept, refuse to accept. 
I know, you know, I know things that, I'm not saying things don't happen. I'm not saying things don't happen right now. You may be sitting here with a situation that, well, I know you are because you're human. But I don't have to accept it. I don't have to, I can oppose it. I, re, you know, I, I, I don't accept it. Yes, it's real. Yes, it's real. It's right here. You can see it, can't you? But I don't accept it. I don't have to accept it. So what am I doing? I'm resistant. Where did it come from? The devil? I don't accept it then. I refuse. Well, well the report says, the, the test says that. I know the test says that. That's why I'm resistant. If it wasn't on the test, it wouldn't need to resist. So I'm not acting like it don't exist. It doesn't, I'm, I oppose it because Jesus already took care of it. Jesus told me I don't have to deal with it. I reject it. I oppose it. I frustrated from operating in my life. This is what Jesus, this is what Jesus did. I, I, no, 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 no. If you came and gave me, listen, man, I, we got some crack we want to do. I, I resist that. I oppose that. And you too. You know, I, <laughs> you know, and you have to watch who you tell this to because, you know, you may have some professional come and say, well, this is, this is what's going to happen. This is the way it's got to be. I said, no. Okay, thank you. You go get in your car because you don't want them calling the popo on you while you're in his office. You say, Father, you, you, you see this? You see what he said? Put it up on the, put it up on the, on your, in your vision board. I reject you. I oppose you. You will not have dominion in my body. Uh uh, no, 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 no. I've been redeemed. I know my daddy had it, but I'm, I'm redeemed. But I know who I am. I'm a child of Abraham. Healing is the children's bread. You better, you better ask somebody because it's about to manifest up in here. You think I'm playing. This is, no, you got you to oppose it, reject it. Say, I'm not settling for that. Think about some of the stuff you just like, you know, I have to think about how sometimes people have benefits on the job. I know this one guy, and he's trying to get some stuff from the VA. And, man, he working. You would think he was a Philadelphia lawyer. Yeah. He, he finding all the, all the things, all the, he going all the way back because he refused. He said, I served for eight years in the military. This happened to me in the military. Y'all going to pay. And they try to give him all this. No, no, no. He said, uh-uh, I refuse all of that. And he's on him, and he's on it because he knows this belongs to me. It's the same thing with healing. It's the same thing. We would not let the devil just dominate us where sin is concerned. And we're not, oh, no, I can't handle it. Jesus said, you don't have to put up with one day of sickness. You don't have to, oppression, depression, fear, worry, I don't care. Whatever's causing dis-ease in your body, he said, you don't have to put up with that. I die for that. You don't have to live, you know, I was, people are, well, you know, we're going to, we, you know, we, we need to send you to anger management. I don't need to manage anger. I need to get rid of anger. Amen. I don't want no manage, manage anger. I've had people say, well, you know, we just, I had to go tell me, you just going to have to have this for the rest of your life and we can manage it. I don't want to manage it. I don't want it. I want to be done with it. And Jesus made that possible for me. Amen. I don't say, I hope you get stirred up because some of you set up for, well, they said. They said. Well, let me tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, by his stripes, you were healed. And so you don't have to walk that out. It may not happen, and it's not going to happen over, well, it might. But for most people, it doesn't happen overnight because we got to renew our mind. We got we to gotta uproot all this other stuff we've been believing. What I'm saying now, to some people, just foreign. Well, Pastor, somebody, you know, you got you to gotta have something. I know. Healing. You're snatching it off because you got your manifestation. <laughs> yeah. So I want you to think, well, whatever you're dealing with right here now, I don't care what it is. And, you know, and, and uh, you, need to, you, you need to get full of this before you really need it. Now, you can, you can muscle through it, but while you're sitting here like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. But there's people you know. Let me show you a scripture because this is not just for us. And God doesn't, see, People, me selfishness. Some people just want to be healed so they can go play a little bit more racquetball. 
or they want to put their skinny jeans on. And <laughs> no, people want to be healed, so 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 they can you know go to Disney World and and, and ride a ride without without restrictions. No, all about my comfort. I don't want to be in pain no more. Well, what about what about being useful for the kingdom? What about being a nice, strong vessel for the kingdom of God? What about glorifying God in my body? Didn't he say it? Yeah, you're not doing this for. Ooh, girl, you look good. Well. Uh, uh, if that's what you want, that's your reward. But, but no, I want to be, I want to be, God, I want to glorify, I want to prove to people you're alive in me. I got to see this. I got to see this. And I'm not going to stop until I see this. I'm saying, y'all can tell I'm, I'm pretty passionate about it. Be, and that's why I go, man, I go lay hands on, I don't care if I I'll lay hands on a fence post. And I'll shout it to the housetop. Well, Pastor, do you ever have issues? I have them all the time. Not all the time. Sometimes. But I'm on them like this. And I talk to myself. I don't talk to myself. I talk to it. I hate it. I hate it. Just like I hate sin. Sin robbed me for 26 years. Sickness robbed me a little longer than that because I didn't know this. And don't mess with my children. When he was little, you know, he got to do it, get it on now. But, but when he's like, oh, no. Oh, no. No, you messing with the wrong one. I'd rather you mess with me. Okay. You good? Now, remember I told you I, I'm reading this book called Extreme Ownership. And here's the argument, and these, these tapes go out all over the place and internet and TV and stuff and extreme ownership. Whose responsibility is it to, to resist? No, here's what I'm saying. God does not control. People say this all the time. God, well, God is in control. God does not control everything. If God was always in control of everything, I wouldn't have to resist and submit. That's right. Right? right? If God was in control, I wouldn't have to submit to him and resist the devil. God would just make him flee. So I own uh, some of the stuff that I do endure, tolerate, go through. It's because I haven't owned my responsibility to resist. He said, if I submit to him and resist, that stuff's got to go. And you and I cannot let the enemy confuse us on this issue, or we'll never ever get to the point where this is manifesting. Because if I think God is in control, guess what I won't do? If I think God's in control, I'll just wait him out. And I won't resist. I'll be passive. See, a lot of people think that God is totally, well, he is sovereign, but there's a lot of things he put before. He said, it's not his will that any should perish. Right? But people are perishing all the time because they're not choosing, to, they're not making a choice to choose life. And so they, they, they perish. But, but if the choice, the responsibility for me to resist is in my hand. If I just think everything is God's well and God's good time, I'll be passive. And I won't go after what belongs to me. And I'll have to put up with it as long as I put up with it. Now, we're talking about healing, but this is anything in the Bible. God never called us to be passive about anything. He made the provision. Now, I just got to go after it. Like my peace. My peace is nobody's responsibility but mine. 
She's not responsible for it. He's not responsible. My peace is I'm my, it's my responsibility. He gave me perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts him. I got to keep my mind on him and I got to trust him. That's my responsibility. Extreme ownership. I got to own my peace. I got to own my healing. You listening to me? I got to own it. A lot of stuff that we tolerate or deal with because we tolerate it. You got to own your responsibility. Glory to Jesus. My happiness. God purchased it. I own it. And so, and so the way I process that is, you know, I don't, I don't allow a lot of stuff to get to me. I just, and, and those who know me real good, I just, I don't like use a whole lot of words to explain stuff. I said this morning, if I tell you no, no is a complete sentence. <laughs> so don't be asking me, well, what do you mean by that? I said no, you don't, I don't, you don't, we, that's it. Let's talk about something else. You don't need to know. No. I told you no. So I don't mean, well, I don't want to talk about it. What we need to talk about? Ain't nothing to talk about. If I wanted you to know, I would have said no. And you know why? Here's the reason why I want, no. So if I say no, next. That's just the way I am. You leave out a lot of, because you start explaining a whole bunch of stuff. You start lying and stuff, and you start saying stuff that ain't true. And you start, exact, then you got to go back and repent. You know, man, fuck all that. Because I'm responsible. I'm responsible. I know this may not sound like, this is huge to me. It's huge to me. And when I found out that everything, my joy, my peace, everything, it's not predicated on anything. That's what I love about God. Because he said, whosoever will, let him come. So, so if I want to go all the way in there, it's, he said, come on. Now, you're going to have to, if you, if you want to, now, you, you're going to have to deny yourself and pick up your own cross. But it'll be worth it. Everybody say, extreme ownership. Extreme ownership. You have responsibility for your health, for your peace. For your for your for your wealth, for your relationships, for your home, you have responsibility for all that. If you depress, it's because you depress. You it's your responsibility to come out of that. Now God will help you. Now I mean, you can go get help and all of that, but at the end of the day, it's my responsibility. I had something happen to me last week, and uh, you know. Some people close to me, they're like, oh, I can't believe it. I went, they, they, they shouldn't have done that. I'm like, you know what, it's okay. I ain't losing no, it's okay. <laughs> to them, they're like, oh, that is messed up. I'm not, it is, but it's okay. I'm moving on. Yeah. Moving on up. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because if I get stuck on that and see, okay, Y'all listening to me? I'm trying to just dump on you. He said, resist the devil and he'll flee, right? right. right. Submit to God. Right. One of the things the devil does is he's a major distractor. Yeah. I got a series downstairs called Extreme Focus. You got to stay focused. But, but if I get caught up in stuff over here, I can mess up with my submission or I'll be distracted in my resisting. You understand that? Like this over here, that has no priority. That'll, you know, that'll be over in a week. They'll start talking about that in a week. But this right here, I'm living with this. I can't afford to let that thing, that, that tumor grow in me another two days. I can't, I can't afford to see my son another two days. Like, uh-uh. I got, I got stuff to do. Go take that somewhere else. But right now, this is my focus. This is my priority. This is my responsibility. I love the doctors, I love medical science, I love all of that. But see, they practice and they got too much stuff. They said it worked this year, next year it caused the cancer. I ain't got time for all that. <laughs> My God. I'm sorry, I get kind of off when I get on this stuff. But that's why we need to focus. You know, keep your focus. Go, go to 1 John 3, 8. Let's wrap this up. No, don't, no, go to, uh, go to John. No. <laughs> Go to Acts 10, then John, 1 John. Because I feel like I'm trying to prove this thing out. I know some of you, you forgot about this, or some of you never heard of it, and some that know it, it's just reinforcement. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with what? 
who went about doing good and doing what? Healing, Healing all who were oppressed by who? Who oppressed them? Who healed them? Who pressed them? Yeah. Who pressed them? For God was with him. <laughs> Jesus is letting us know the devil oppresses people. So if I think God is behind my sickness, I'll submit to it. Right? If I believe God is doing it to teach me something, I'll submit to it. I won't resist. Yeah. And I told him this morning, I said, so if God is doing it to teach me something, I won't resist it. But then the logical thinking would say, okay, if you believe God is doing it to teach you something, or this is God's will for you to be sick, why are you looking for medical attention? Why are you taking medicine? Why are you making an appointment at your doctor? Don't, don't get surgery. Don't take medicine. Don't get spiritual advice. If you believe God is teaching you something. Right? Isn't that logical? Don't mess up the will of God. Let God teach you all the way. Let God teach you. Just stay with it. What are you doing? God teaching me. Yeah, you can say, cancel your insurance if you believe God teaches you. Cancel your medical insurance. If that's what you believe. This is for the people watching on TV, y'all. y'all. <laughs> but no, because sometimes people say, God is sovereign, and I'm, God is teaching me something. He's making me stronger through this. No, no, no. Okay, but if you believe that, go all the way through with it. That's all I'm saying. Let him teach you. Because if you <laughs> if you try to get well, that would that's now you're resisting God. Right? Hmm. How many would say, hmm, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, because you've heard people say that. Well, you know, it's in God's time, you know, God is trying to take you to the valley. <laughs> No, he said he'll be with me in the valley. He didn't say he's going to take me through. He'll be with me in the valley. So Jesus was getting stuff off of folks who were oppressed by the devil. So if you're here today, God brought you in this room today. He brought you in here today. For you to make us to some of you, some of you, you just re stirring up. Some of you are like, oh wow, you know, you tweaking a little bit, and then some's like, oh shoot, I didn't. Okay, the devil's responsible for this, so I'm not going to praise God for it. Lord, thank you for for bringing something in my life to cause me to slow down, so I can listen to you now. You don't need to slow down. You can just slow down whenever you want to and listen to God. I hate sickness. Say it with me. I hate sickness and disease. Okay, one last scripture. It's First John. Thank you, Lord. He who sins, verse, First John 3, 8. This is instruction of the day, boy. First John 3, 8. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was, <clears throat> he was what? Manifested. Manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Now we just read where <laughs> he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Now Jesus is saying, I came to destroy the works of the devil. Glory to Jesus. I came, whatever the devil put on you, I'm here to take it off. Whatever he, he, he stole from you, I'm here to replace. Whatever is broken, I'm here to fix. Whatever is missing, I'm here to make it whole. That's why he said I came. Now, the part that, that I want us to get as we get ready to go, because all of us, all of us, you know, it's God's plan. Jesus came and did it.
But then he left us here as representatives, right? He gave us his name, which we talked about earlier. And then the Romans 8 says, he, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in us. So he sent the Holy Spirit to indwell us, to empower us. Same thing. And now he's saying, in John 14, he said, the work that I do, you do. Didn't he say it? So, so now, I don't just need to be healed and whole just for me, but I got some works to do. So, so I, need to, I, need to, I need to go about looking. I'm looking for some works now. I need to get my stuff done, but I'm looking. There's other people that need this. There's people who will never know about Jesus unless his reps get on the field and do the field work. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, see, that's your excitement. <laughs> no, see, see, the excitement in the walk of God. This is why I think why God got me done this selfish thing. Because a lot of times we don't even think about anybody outside of our own little. Why do I need to go do that? I went to church. What you, this is not just me to come to church and log in. Church is out there. Manifestations are out there. So I need to be, I need to go do some work. You got cousins, you got relatives, you got neighbors, you got work with people that need some work undone. No. Yeah, we all do. We all do. We, <laughs> Jesus said, I come to undo that. Okay, Jesus undo it. Now I can go undo it somewhere else. I can tell people, I had that. Jesus undid it for me. He can do it for you. And this time where we're living in right now, right now, right now, right now, y'all know this world is not getting better. It's not. This is the best it's going to be. It's going to get extremely worse. But Jesus said, don't worry about it. I will overcome the world. He knew you would be here in 2015 dealing with what you're dealing with, and he gave you the wherewithal to win. If you couldn't win, he'd have had you born in another time. Yeah, yeah, we live in a toxic world. We, we're eating stuff, drinking stuff. A lot of this stuff, uh, we're breathing stuff. A lot of this stuff is not good for us. But at the same time, he, we have the wherewithal to deal with it. Pressures on you. Pressures on your children. Pressures on your marriage. Pressures on you to quit. Pressures on you to do stuff you never thought you would do 10 years ago, 5 years ago. Pressures on you to compromise. Pressures on you to take the easy way out. Why do I have to keep standing? Why in there an easier way? No. Pressures on you. And people, listen, people are crumbling under it every single day. People you never thought would be crumbling are crumbling under them. People are being deceived at wreck numbers now. Because somehow, somehow, the devil had talked them out of standing firm on Jesus. And now they look at people like me and say, he's a fool. Who believes that? Nobody believes that stuff no more. Pastor, we don't, that, you, need to, you need to bring your old time religion to update it now. We don't, we don't believe like that anymore. People don't go to church and sit there and listen to you for an hour no more. But then I got to go and sit there with them for an hour or two and watch. Anyway. All right, y'all. That's all I'm going to say to you today. I never, get, I never get done. I just have to stop. But uh, we'll bring that self. I think maybe next week I'll bring that selfishness thing to you. Um, I, I wrote a very uh, uh, beautiful letter to, to the congregation. See, and then I put my picture on the front. You see that handsome guy right there? Okay. 